Hi fellow learners, uh, my name is Derek Tsai. Um, today I'm going to review the what is the p-value anyway, 34 stories to help you actually understand statistics by Andrew Vickers. Um, when I was studying engineering, statistics was not a required subject. Uh, it wasn't until when I started working that I appreciate the power of statistics. In this pre in precise world, many things can be explained only in statistical terms, such as confidence interval, uh, sample size, etc. So I got a full lesson of uh, statistics as part of my uh, MBA degree curriculum. Even after taking many more uh, statistical related classes and going through a full six, six, six sigma uh, green belt training, there are quite a few things about statistics that's still very hard for me to grasp. Uh, it's not just uh, the p-value that confuse people. Uh, there are simply too many pitfalls when novices or even experts uh, apply statistics to real-life problems. Um, the author of this book organized the 34 stories across 34 chapters. Since the author worked in the medical field, uh, he mentioned quite a few tidbits about how drugs are clinically uh, trialed and uh, he mentioned quite a few uh, he is also a, a good book uh, for beginners as well as people who use the statistically uh, re regularly um, to watch out for these pitfalls uh, you might get a different perspective about statistics uh, and I did uh, from this book so my key takeaway uh, from this book is for me is some uh, refresher course, um, something new, there are a few things. Uh, number one, uh, many things in life just don't follow the normal distribution, uh, especially the ones that involve uh, uh, physical ability, such as pregnancy duration, uh, body BMI, as sometimes um, a large scale might fit a little bit better uh, instead of normal distribution, that is. Number two is there are two source of variations. The observ observable natural variation is what I term as uh, uh, what I think is a reproducibility, and there's a variation of study results, and these are uh, repeatability. Um, the, the, the third thing is the st statistical ties. For example, in election polls, uh, means the confidence interval just overlap um, in the uh, and there's no difference, and that happened. Uh, that's described in chapter twelve. And number four is the, uh, the p-value is actually a test hypothesis. Uh, it's used for to test hypothesis. Uh, number five, statistics are mainly used for inference, inference, inference uh, to test the hypothesis or prediction. It can be used for prediction or inference. And prediction is uh, for extrapolation or interpolation and uh, this is the tool that the uh, statist statistician use to extrapolate. Uh, number six, uh, no hypothesis is a statement suggesting that nothing interesting is going on. That means it is a status quo, and there's no difference between the observable, observed data and what is expected, or there's no difference between any two groups of population. Um, the p-value is the probability that the data will be at least uh, as defined as the data will be at least as extreme as those observed uh, if the no hypothesis hypothesis were true. So in other words, that um, is really is is a, is a measurement of how extreme the data is. If the data is very extreme, that means the p-value is very low. Um, then most likely. Uh, the whole the, the no hypothesis is not true, or um, the status you should not maintain the status quo. Okay, so that's how I um, how I consider how I think about it. Uh, number six, t test versus Wilcoxon test. Uh, Wilcoxon test is fairly new to me. Um, t test is pretty uh, pretty uh, popular and is used everywhere. Um, if the data is very skewed, you use a, a Wilcoxon test. Data can be converted into ranks first. Uh, must be converted into ranks first. And this is described in chapter 16. Number seven, 
precision or the width of the confidence interval uh, equals to variation divided by square root of the sample size. So that's a normal, um, that's, a, that's probably the only equation that you need to worry about. Um, so in to, to reduce the confidence interval or to reduce the band of, uh, of the precision uh, or the more precision, uh, to increase the precision or de decrease the um, confidence interval by half, uh, you need to have four times as many sample size. So it gets to be uh, very expensive, uh, especially in the medical field. Um, to get a sample size for a specific test uh, equals to noise or variation uh, divided by the signals or the confidence interval uh, square of that. Okay, so that's the um, the inverse uh, relationship between the two. The uh, the confidence interval want to be very narrow and then you need to have very uh, large sample size so in a square relationship inversely proportional number eight adjust the results can be applied to multivariable regression to help with the confounding issue so uh, this is a mouthful uh, basically statistician use the um, adjust the, the result by narrowing down the uh, uh, variables so that they can reduce the uh, overlapping or confuse, confounding uh, relationship between variables. Okay. Number nine, uh, sensitivity is a probability of a sensitive diagnostic test given you have the disease. So sensitivity specificity is the probability that a negative diagnostic test given that um, you don't have the disease. So it's a true negative. The most worrisome situation is when the test becomes um, uh, come back positive or they indeed to have a disease, which is a positive predictor value. Or when the test comes back a negative and the patient is going to be uh, uh, truly free of the negative uh, predictor value. So there's a lot of, um, I'd like to tell you, you know, if a, if a test is positive, how are you, you going to tell the co your patient that um, um, that you actually have a disease or what are the probability that it's not okay and then if, per, if the test come back negative uh, how are you going to tell your patient that the um, you're actually free of disease and sometimes it's not always uh, black and white uh, and that's how the um, statistic work number 10 uh, do not accept the hypothesis okay say we cannot show a difference you cannot say that um, uh, when the p-value is less than a um, certain number, usually it's 0 0.05 or uh, some 5% value, uh, then you, you don't want to say that you reject uh, the null hypothesis. You just want to say we cannot show a difference or you cannot accept uh, the null hypothesis. So uh, null hypothesis is something like, um, uh, coming back to the, uh, uh, the definition, null hypothesis to me is like a status quo, uh, the common wisdom, uh, that's what people have been doing, has been doing for a long time. And kind of, uh, if you want to shake the boat or uh, change the status quo, you got to show the data of extreme value. Okay, and you got to have p-value uh, less than 5% or 1%, whatever you define to be. Um, but if your calculation show up to be zero, you don't want to say the p-value is uh, it's zero. You, just, you want to say it's less than uh, 0 0.001, for example. Okay. Number eleven. Uh, some test method, uh, for example, chi square or chi square ANOVA, only provide a p-value. Right? It does not provide the estimates. So it gives you the uh, the p-value, uh, and the correlation provides the estimate, but no inference. Okay. So there are different methods for um, different purposes. Number 12, one common error is to calculate probability of something that's already happened. So this is something very new to me. Um, when something uh, coming to conclusion about what cause it based on whether the probability is, how, is low, uh, uh, then, for example, the calculation of uh, uh, the R that the OJ killed his wife, uh, you give an example in the book. Uh, instead, the question should ask if a woman has been murdered and has been previously beaten by her husband, 
what is the prob probability that he was going to be the murderer? And, and the, the odd number is much higher than trying to say, you know, the person, uh, uh, anyway, there's a lot of uh, uh, way of uh, calculating the odd. And this conditional probability needs to be uh, taken into account. Number 13 is the conditional probability depends on both the probability before the information was obtained. Uh, prior probability, uh, for example, the prior in the ex example that was given is that there's a prior probability of a heart disease. And the value of the information, um, such as the accuracy of the heart test, those need to be uh, considered at the same time. Um, so number 13 and 12 is very similar. Number 14 is the more statistical test you conduct, the greater the confidence, the greater the chance that one will have come up with a statistical significant even if the null hypothesis is true. So there are ways you can play with the trick uh, by conducting more statistical tests, narrowing down the scope, um, and then you have a higher chance to come up with something statistical significant. So this is how kind of statisticians lie about um, the data or this is how they play the game. Number 15, a smaller study has a good chance of failing to reject uh, the null hypothesis, even if it's false. So this is the opposite of number 14. Um, subgroup analysis increases the, the rise of falsely rejecting the null hypothesis when it's true, and falsely failing to reject the null hypothesis when it's false. So there's a mouthful there. Um, so again, once again, it's some kind of tricks that the statistician uh, statistician play. Um, number 16, uh, p-values -val p measure the strength of uh, evidence, not the size of effect. Okay, so if the p-value is small, you can, you can only do um, uh, to test the hypothesis, how good it, the hypothesis is. You cannot uh, measure the strength of the, the evidence. So, it, so the number 17 says that you cannot compare p-value. Um, the p-value, one case of p, lower p-value does not mean that the data is better or the evidence is stronger. Okay. Number 18 is many statistical errors occur because of the uh, starting the clock at the wrong time. Once again, I make sure you're comparing about the same um, uh, with the time clock, okay, starting the right time. Number 20, uh, statistics is used to um, help that scientists analyze data, but in itself is a science, so um, had to take the number, interpret the number correctly, and Treat it as such. Number 21, statistics should be about linking math to science. Um, a, number A is think through the science and develop a statistical hypothesis in the light, in light of the specific question. And B, interpret the result analysis in, term, in terms of the implication for those questions. Um, so treat it as a science, don't treat it and go by, go through the right procedure. Uh, the prior right process of testing the hypothesis and interpret the result uh, as such. Number 22, and that's the last one, statistics is about people. Uh, even you cannot see the tears. So uh, they're used to interpret the, uh, the data um, and, more, and, and the end is all about people, right? So um, we need to be uh, very uh, uh, conscious of the the, the purpose and, and, the, and the power of the statistic. So that wraps it up uh, in terms of my review and my takeaway from the book. Uh, it's a very good book. I would say 60% of that is, is old stuff and 40% are fairly interesting, funny, and uh, uh, I, I, I get something from it, right? So once again, uh, this is Derek Tsai uh, reviewing this book, What is a P-Value Anyway? Uh, oh, and here's the book, I forgot to show the book. Uh, this is, where is the p-value? Sorry, this is from a uh, library. Uh, I don't usually buy books uh, because if I buy the books, I never read them. So, it's a good book. Go and read them. Thank you.